Welcome to another episode of Pinball Workshop's Tech and Tools. This time, I've got two tools for you. One that works on your, your leaf switches. The other makes it really nice when your fingers start to hurt trying to get bulbs in and out of back box insert boards or from the top of the play field. So today, we'll be looking at a leaf adjustment tool and a cool pinball lamp bulb extractor. That's coming up on the Pinball Workshop. All right, so today we want to talk about a couple of tools that I find invaluable when it comes to doing pinball maintenance and repair. The first one, and, and, and this is one that you will find around, and this is a leaf adjustment switch tool. So what this basically is, is a, is a metal rod that has basically an angled cut for leaf adjustments, for copper leaf adjustments, and then another side with a 90 degree with a, a, a cut for leaf adjustments. And so what does this mean? Well, if you've ever looked at, this is a flipper, double, uh, double switch stack flipper uh, a button leaf switch stack. What we can see here is that when the flipper button actually presses here, it'll engage the first flipper and actually make contact point here to actually hit maybe like a lower uh, flipper bat. But if I continue to push, you'll see that it actually engages the other switch stack and makes a contact point here. So maybe that's maybe a, a, an upper play field swip, uh, flipper or, you know, certain games may have lane change, maybe at your, at your rollovers up top. So that may actually do your lane change on your bulb as well. But in this case, what we want to do is making sure that we have appropriate gaps. You'll find a lot of information about how, what is an appropriate gap in terms of your, 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 your flipper switches, your pop bumpers, things of that nature. Maybe we'll cover that in a different, util, uh, in a different video. But this time we want to actually talk about how to adjust these. Now, there are ways, and again, a cheap way that you can adjust these, but it's taking a flathead screwdriver, diving it into the bottom of the, switch, the leaf switch stack, and then just adjusting accordingly. And this works great. But what I will tell you is, for as many times I've used this utility, I'll end up with a very bent or misaligned or really just kind of messed up uh, copper leaf switch stack, uh, which, which it may still work, it just doesn't necessarily look as pretty. But with this utility, I find this can give us, our, will, will keep the integrity of the straightness of the leaf switch, but also get us the appropriate gap at the contact point. So you can see right here, this is a little bit of a push. Now that would be a larger gap here than there because the flipper button uh, from the cabinet actually sets in a little bit, much like this, so when you push. But let's say that for some reason it was too tight and that this was continuing to always touch. Well, what you can do is actually come down in here, uh, you get the tool over that leaf switch and you actually just give it a little bit of an adjustment. I'm just gonna, applying a little bit of pressure and what you'll see is now this contact point is much further apart and this one is much closer. Now, if I do this enough, uh, let me just get this back in here, you'll see that I'll, I'll actually get to a point of adjusting this too much. You can see my bend here and then these are almost touching, which again, this would not be necessarily an appropriate relationship. You wanna keep this switch stack open. So in that case, you may actually have to go back into this switch stack uh, get your leaf adjustment tool here. And again, applying a little bit of pressure to open this one back up. Now again, I'm being very cautious here, but you can see now I've readjusted that, that gap appropriately. And I can do this for a variety of different things. So what you'll, one thing you do is when you buy a machine or you're repairing or restoring a machine and you go through your switch test, you may actually press or you may have a rollover or something that presses a switch together and that actually causes something to happen. But if it's not gapped appropriately or there's not enough pressure applied or it's too far apart, you see that they may, they may never touch or they may inconsistently touch. So your leaf adjustment tool is really a key piece of making sure that you have everything adjusted appropriately. So we also have things here. So this would be a uh, end of stroke switch that would go on a flipper. And unlike our, our this being a cabinet flipper here, these are always uh, open and these actually start closed. 
So one thing is also important here is that when you when you make contact, uh, when the when the assembly makes contact to open the switch, is that you have to make sure that the, the gap here is also set appropriately. Sometimes they may not even be touching, or the way that maybe some flipper styles may work is that this may be stuck open. Maybe this has been too worn, and now it's just kind of stuck open like this. So you need to go in here and then adjust it back so that it stays closed. So there's some key, some really interesting things that you'll you'll learn as you go. Excuse me, as you go, and the flipper adjustment is really a key area. Uh, excuse me, the leaf adjustment is a key area, and this little tool makes it almost foolproof to move the uh, leaf switches in the right direction. One of the other things I'll talk about is this little utility, which is a lamp bulb extractor. Now I will tell you that I do not use this as much as I just showed just on the on the flipper tool, but I do find this very important, especially on back box inserts. So if you have, let's say, a bulb that is sticking through a back box insert, and maybe it's deep, maybe the socket's really deep, and you can just barely get your fingers on it, or you get this, you know, you're just trying to find a way to turn it just ever so slightly get it out. What this utility does is actually goes over the socket and it actually can stay in here it's a little bit firm and then what you can do is actually turn that bulb and, and actually give it a little bit of, of a uh, pressure turn and then remove that from the socket so this works great I, I i mean in terms of removing a bunch of old incandescent bulbs especially <laughs> especially if they're dirty this works very very quickly and very, very easily. And it saves your thumbs and forefingers from trying to grab them just so. The only downside to this is that depending on the LEDs, if you're using LEDs or replacing with LEDs, you will see here that there, there's definitely a little bit of a difference from a shape perspective, this being more of a cylindrical, this being more of a cone. And what you'll notice is, is that this doesn't actually grab, where this will actually stick for these common LED bulbs. It just grabs. There's no there's no resistance, no friction to turn on it. So one thing to note is, although this tool is helpful, especially when maybe if you're sticking with incandescent bulbs or replacing incandescent bulbs, this tool is is a godsend. But again, if you're going to LED, not great. Does not work for those. If you happen to know a tool that works for LED bulbs like this, definitely leave a comment below because I would love to buy one of those. And if you think this video was helpful for you, please feel free to, to like this video. If you know anybody else that um, would be interested in learning about pinball maintenance, uh, go ahead hit that subscribe button, shoot them this video uh, so that they can learn about the fun it is to do pinball maintenance and repair. So this has been Pinball Workshop's uh, Tech and Tools. Uh, we'll be back with another video very soon with more exciting things to look at.